Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to The Secret of Minecraft's Ancient Pyramids Deep Dive by Retro Gaming Now. Now, I reacted to the last video, which was an Enderman Theory, and honestly, I actually liked it. I thought it was a really well put together theory, I think it was really good, and yeah, I'm honestly interested to see what his version of the Minecraft lore is compared to Map Hats, because it is very interesting when you have like two different people trying to, I guess decode would be the right word, but I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this video will be about the ancient pyramids, which on in the thumbnail it said ocean mon it, there was ocean monuments, so I'm guessing it's about that. But it also could just be about like the desert pyramids, which I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, because it, it could be. And yeah, I mean, with his first theory, I feel like it maybe the the Enderman maybe built the structures, but again, why why would they? It only makes sense that they build the end or not the end city. Well, yeah, the end cities for like Shulker Farms. I do actually like that idea, and also the fortresses to like farm blaze rods. But why the desert temples and why the you know yeah yeah just there's no there's really no point in that. I feel like so yeah honestly. I feel like I don't I don't really know I don't know how he's gonna apply the Enderman theory to this theory but uh, yeah anyways guys regions in the description make sure to retro gaming now thanks so much for watching let's get right into it Minecraft is a game with many mysteries right from the very beginning the player is dropped into a vast world with little guidance and forced to discover things on their own although True. mostly empty there are some intelligent creatures around however not every place is a simple village. Scattered throughout the world oh. is evidence of an ancient past in the form of large structures with riches. Oh yeah, I also forgot about that. Who built these? What was their purpose? Why are they here? To find the answer, we must examine the clues Ooh, both subtle and in plain sight. Perhaps we can discover the temple. meaning behind So yeah, it's just all the structures. And There's also the so jungle thing. The I don't even know what those are called. Welcome to another episode of Deep Dive, where we examine the most also the igloos. interesting parts. What about of the games. igloos? There's a lot of stuff for us to find. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. Secret of the Ancient Pyramids. Almost every person that has played Minecraft has stumbled upon some of the ancient structures found throughout the world. Perhaps yes. they have to the jungle to find a pyramid there, solving a puzzle before getting startled by a booby trap. Or maybe they oh, yeah, a booby traps. in the desert, falling down to I've never seen those things ever blown up by a TNT trap. But I know they exist. The more adventurous explorer may have discovered a deep water ocean monument defended by terrifying ocean guardians. Mm, yeah. No, don't go that way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get it's like a jump scare, but I don't. I wouldn't say it's like, oh, like so terrifying that you scream. Where did they like, yeah, it's a jump scare. Initially, but not as bad as one. Be the most it's not that bad. In the overworld, but that doesn't quite make sense. First of all, villages don't spawn in jungle biomes, making it less likely True. that they built the jungle pyramids. Also, also they can't wield tools, the by the way. Redstone. How could they have constructed the complex booby traps in the desert? Redstone circuitry construction, that is. Clerks can trade for redstone dust, but this is pretty clearly intended for potion room. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so villagers can trade redstone dust but they only use it for potion brain because yeah you can use yeah what is that enhancement for again because i know is, is it for like the added time or is that glowstone i know gunpowder is for splash potions but yeah maybe it's like it, it could be i think it might increase the time or maybe will it increase the level because there's also one where you can increase the level. I don't know, I'm not that great with potion brewing. I don't really do it as much. <laughs> ...and jungle temples. Furthermore, ocean monuments spawn deep in oceans, far away from the mainland. Villagers can swim, oh, yeah. but just barely. Are we really supposed to believe that this bumbling society was able to construct massive underwater pyramids? The bumbling society! <laughs> So what about the next option, the Enderman? Oh yeah. In my previous video, I outlined evidence. Yeah, okay, so now he's bringing the back the last there. All right. Capable of creating and destroying the world, and from a basic level, the Enderman makes sense. They're known to build yeah. in cities, and they spawn throughout the overworld. However, there are a few critical pieces of evidence that preclude them as candidates. Well, yeah, they don't like water, <laughs> so. We have no evidence of them understanding how to build redstone, as found in jungle temples and True. pyramids. Furthermore, Endermen are notoriously allergic to water. Is it really conceivable that they would have chosen to build a massive structure in the ocean? Yeah. And even no. if they could, why? 
it seems as though they were far more interested in resources from the nether, such as blaze rods. These questions are pretty hard to answer on their own. Evidence within the structures themselves is limited. We need to look elsewhere to True. find the clues that will lead us to the answer. Thankfully, there is something decomposing deep underwater. Let's literally take a deep dive for once oh, to a structure shipwrecks? in the aquatic update. Shipwrecks. Oh, I forgot about those structures, too. I mentioned igloos, but I forgot about that. <laughs> Within the ocean biomes of Minecraft, we can occasionally find sunken ships. These aren't some little boats made with five wood on a crafting table. No, these were majestic vessels. Yeah, can we talk about the boat crafting recipe for a second? Like, it also has an internal why does it include a shovel for some time? It even has places for cannons, and the chests contain equipment for battle, including gunpowder, TNT, and armor. The ships clearly were designed to use sails, given the huge masts. They look very similar to an 18th century ship, although I don't have the nautical or historical background. It's a replica, but you get the idea. Yeah. Okay. It appears as though these ships were designed for long voyages, as evidenced by the now moldy food stored within. There's a treasure chest that contains diamonds, bottles of enchanting, and other riches, as well as a chest with tactical equipment such as books, compasses, maps, feathers, and clocks. Oh yeah. Another thing worth pointing out is that shipwrecks can be made of almost every type of wood, from the more common oak and birch to rarer types including jungle and dark oak. Oh yeah, and they ship can. Also uses multiple types of wood at once. This seems to imply that the ships required some sort of transportation infrastructure just to be built. Mm -hmm. They most likely couldn't have been constructed by a single city in one place due to the Ooh, necessary that is interesting. All of this evidence points to sea That's very interesting because yeah, how would they get the other wood if it came from only one ships place? Of a variety of materials and they'd mastered the art of preparation. They also had fairly advanced technology with knowledge of navigation, writing and oh. enchanting. So the question remains, who were these sailors? Once again, I really <laughs> don't think it was the villagers. The timeline is a major reason. Okay. Since villagers so he's in thinking the world there's today, pirates? They still, villages also lack the infrastructure required for such large ships, and they don't spawn in jungle or dark forest biomes, both of which are potential ship materials. We should consider the Endermen for an important reason, in ships. Mm, in the previous yeah. video, I proposed a theory where Endermen began in the end and discovered a way to get to the overworld. Check that out using the card above. In this theory, the Endermen eventually colonize the overworld and the nether before being trapped in the end after accidentally summoning the dragon. Endermen weren't able to build end ships before they went to the overworld, as evidence So he's kind of just restating what he theorized. And since I Endermen think. are notoriously allergic to water, perhaps they were the ones who built these overworld ships. Although this kind of makes sense, it still doesn't explain our fundamental question True. Of who built the ancient monuments. I want to propose something oh, that yeah. at first may seem a bit strange, but if you'll stick with me, hopefully I'll be able to explain it. I think that there was another species of builders in the overworld before the Endermen traveled there. I should mention that Matt right. Pat says something similar, Yeah. he believes that his species eventually became the Endermen. I disagree with that as explained in the Endermen video. I'm going to suggest that these builders okay. are the ones who built yeah. the ships we find in the overworld. So... All equipment implies that they were humanoid, armor, food, and the like. Even the height of the internal room is too short for the Endermen. Yeah, so I will say that this structure thing does support MatPat's theory a little bit, but... These builders ...and learn things from them. Yeah. Perhaps the art of enchanting, how to build nether portals, or how to make ships. Thus, the Endermen modeled their end ships yeah. after normal ships in the overworld. What if if they so learn enchantments? In these Wait. builders would have been in the overworld at a similar time to before the Endermen were trapped in the... What if, I, I just thought of something. What if, to add to his first theory, because you know how, like... Endermen have the enchanted like weapons and armor. What if they got that from the overworld and then use that in enchantment tables to test the skill of enchanting? Like they didn't know how to do it as well, so they decided to test it. And that's how they got those like enchanted weapons and that like maybe I will say his theory with like that there were builders before and they eventually just go extinct is is interesting that could that could solve the theory of uh what where skeletons and zombies came from and also just like yeah that could propose that not only that there could be something where they also went into the nether and then they all of them that's how they went extinct was they didn't really know how to survive in the nether and then boom soul sand was created that would make so much sense like that could be added to the theory where like some of them also went into the nether and that's how like the soul sand also with the wither skeletons came to be maybe even if my timeline isn't quite right there's another big piece of evidence for them existing at one point 
zombies and skeletons. Oh yeah, it literally just pointed that out. seem to mention there's a humanoid player, and they are clearly different from villagers, endermen, or even piglins. Some mass extinction event killed all of them off though. But what? Well, we'll save that topic for another video. Okay. X marks the spot. Let's return to the shipwrecks. From the mm, chest contents, yeah, we know that the builders so. had knowledge of explosives and redstone. In fact, TNT only spawns in two places naturally, shipwrecks and, you guessed it, desert pyramids. <laughs> we can't yeah. find it anywhere else, so it seems likely that the people who built the ships also built the pyramids. However, makes the sense. That makes a lot of sense, item, yeah. Which I haven't mentioned. This is the treasure map, and it's the only item which is guaranteed to spawn within the ship. If we follow the map, we discover a chest buried deep beneath the sand. It contains the loot we might expect. Gold, iron, diamonds, and the like. Nothing too special. However, the heart of the sea. catches the eye. The heart of the sea, again, with a 100% spawn rate. This is clearly important. It's the only thing that, no matter what, the treasure map leads to. The heart of the sea is a strange blue ball, visually unlike any other Minecraft item. It does, however, have a use. It's a critical component. Oh, the conduit, the conduit. yeah. Simply surrounded by some conduits are pretty they good. They're pretty six overpowered. Types of items in Minecraft that are considered rare by their color, including music discs, beacons, and end crystals. Ooh. Similar to other rare items, the conduit is used by building a structure around it in the world. Constructing a prismarine cage underwater with the conduit in the oh, middle yeah. activates it, and something fascinating occurs. The conduit powers up, transforming into a strange undulating oh, the symmetry entity. on that is a little It attacks off. any hostile mob that approaches. It also activates the conduit power buff to anyone nearby, any player that is. I should point out that this doesn't work on Endermen. Conduit power is an incredibly useful trait. Duh. It includes I mean... water breathing, night vision, and haste. Essentially, it includes everything that would be necessary for something like, oh, I don't know, an underwater building project, perhaps? The Makes sense. Had, first, it enabled the builders to create vast ocean monuments with ease, but it also had the additional benefit of acting as a key to these monuments. Dive down and build a conduit? Exploring the monument is no problem. However, without a conduit, an intrepid explorer would be quickly destroyed, unless they were particularly well equipped with potions and supplies. Oh yeah, because of the, the guardians. guardians. Before we discuss the guardians though, I want to suggest an interesting idea. When the conduit is activated, the buff symbol looks very similar to an eye. The same symbol is in the particle effects around the conduit. A YouTuber called GeppoMC noticed something interesting when comparing that symbol to the heart of the sea. It almost looks as though the left is a closed eye and the right is an open eye. Is it possible that the heart of the sea name is more symbolic and this item is actually some sort of eye? Consider Possibly, the that is interesting. The ships was for more than just exploration. What if they were searching for something, a deep sea monster whose eyes have special properties? Ooh, a giant squid a glow squid. Were all the weapons and explosives on board not used for war against other people, but for battle against an ancient and powerful being? The builders could what have would that their be, though? Huron? Before so hiding the treasure deep underground for later retrieval. It's a thought that seems at least somewhat plausible to me, and it gives a reason for the supplies on board. Deep water protectors. Ooh, Even so I'm if guessing guardians, exactly yeah. Where the the came from, yeah, what about drowns? Guardians. Is that just guardians are the same thing as the zombie theory? On your ocean monuments. They come in two varieties, the smaller, standard variant, and the larger, stronger version found deep within, called the Elder Guardian. Guardians are very unique. They have a bizarre laser attack that hits targets precisely at a distance, and their eye follows the player continuously. Oh yeah. However, vision seems to be their only sense. If a player hides behind a block, guardians become unaware of the player and forget about them. It's Ooh, almost as though interesting. they're to do one thing and one thing only, attack enemies on sight. They're not smart enough for anything else. The Elder Guardian is similar. It attacks players that it can see with a laser. It's also capable of inflicting mining fatigue on a player at a long distance. These traits seem mm. especially useful in preventing an unauthorized person from exploring the monument. Some of you probably already see where I'm going with this. I'm not going to make an absolute statement, but I think we at least need to consider the possibility that the Guardians are mechanical. Let's break it down. That was also Matt Pat, that was Matt Pat's theory as well that they were ships. robots. Elder Guardians also cannot reproduce or respawn. Each monument comes with 3 of them. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. The world has a limited number. Also, both types of guardians look as though they're made from prismarine bricks. The texture is very similar and killing either type can result in prismarine shards. Mm. Guardians can also survive above water, something that no fish in Minecraft can do. This implies that, despite their tail fins, they aren't actually fish. 
There's something meant to look like fish. Imposter! Oh my Let's god. Let's listen to a few of their sounds. Oh yeah. This is subjective, of course, but they don't sound natural at all to me. It is Even subjective, Even though high-pitched yeah. noises on land sound like some sort of... But I kind of agree with it. For the sake of argument, let's assume that the Guardians are indeed mechanical. Remember what I was saying earlier about the conduit being a key to the monument? The conduit seems to be almost perfectly suited to counteracting the effects of the Guardians. In fact, they're attracted to it, like a moth to a flame, only to be zapped and destroyed. Maybe Guardians- Wait, they take the damage when they're near a conduit? I did not know that! What if the ancient building- I had no idea! ...to the Guardians in such a way that the conduit would counteract them? It seems like they were the only ones who had access to Hearts of the Sea, since they only occur in one place in the world. So by building True. mechanical guardians, they didn't need to worry about an on-off switch, since the conduit would protect them, and only them, from harm in the monuments. It's actually a pretty clever evolution of their earlier traps. Interesting! Could be broken in by trying every combination, or by just breaking the blocks. Desert pyramids are only safe if you don't know about oh, the yeah. TNT. Once you've fallen for it once, it's easy to just break the pressure plate a second time. Yeah, it's true. But the ocean monument? Well, you can't just force your way in because of the mining fatigue. Add on top of that swarms of guardians, and the ocean monument is almost impossible to attack. Unless you have the key. Then it's a breeze. I think it's yeah. brilliant. An impenetrable fortress because that is actually an the right item. Kinda you cool that, that item, they you actually added the that. Because I did not know that the Let's conduit actually a inflicts a damage on them. Hundreds I had no idea. Of ancient beings explored the world and found many riches along the way. They hid some of these in jungle temples and some in desert pyramids, which were protected by fairly simple safeguards. However, they also created ocean monuments, which were far harder to loot and destroy. Yeah. The only way it would be feasible to access them would be through... There's the just one thing that I think makes this video very dated, is that axolotls are coming, and the they're gonna make going through, uh, water monuments, water monuments underwater monuments, so well, much easier, because axolotls can kill guardians, so... First. Yeah. Underwater ruins are similar in composition to jungle pyramids with mossy stone, oh. or desert pyramids with sandstone. They also sometimes have prismarine and sea lanterns, which eventually became the main building blocks of the monuments. The chests contain similar loot to sunken ships, with buried treasure maps showing up occasionally. However, these ruins weren't useful in the long run, so the builders didn't protect them with guardians, and they eventually broke down. The biggest question of all is, where are these builders? They clearly existed at some point, but what happened? I alluded to this earlier, but the overworld is infested with undead mobs that resemble the player yeah. in shape and size, including skeletons and zombies. Another notable addition is the drowned. Oh, there we go. He finally gets to the, he got to the drowned. grounds. Okay. It's also worth pointing out what? they spawn with generation of ocean ruins. Others have speculated that these undead enemies are a result of some huge event which decimated a thriving species, and I happen to agree. I think that this is the species that built the monuments and the pyramids. Not Endermen, not Villagers, but a huge group that somehow all died, resulting in undead remnants. I have an idea about what happened to them, but it's too big to fit into this video. Yeah. If you're interested in that theory, let me know. When that that sounds interesting, like I will this, say. We should take the time to identify leaps of faith that we've made, or evidence to the contrary. One potential criticism is that if these builders existed at one point, then it would make sense for us to find more evidence of their existence than just these monuments. I would counter that by saying that it actually makes a whole lot of sense that the monuments are some of the few things that are still around. In real life, time erodes all but the strongest of man-made structures. Mm. Look at the Egyptian pyramids. Some of them are over 4,600 years old. So I think the fact that there are so few remaining structures makes sense. I also want to mention that these oh, probably yeah, mine have made the mines buried deep underground. After all, they needed to get their treasure from somewhere, and the mines certainly aren't in use when we find them. Another possible question is why did these people create ocean monuments just to store a few blocks of gold? Is there some other purpose? And I think that's a good point. I'm not sure I have a good reason as to why they're so big for relatively limited treasure. My best guess is that the extinction event happened soon after they finished construction and they didn't have time to fill them up. But I don't know for sure. Yeah. Of course, the biggest leap of faith is that these people were somehow able to construct guardians. But there actually is precedent for this in Minecraft. Iron golems and snow golems are two mobs that are built for- Oh yeah! Tools. 
and I think, yeah, villagers technically build the iron golems, right, though? So yeah, honestly, this theory is interesting. I do like how he does point out the criticisms that do make it, you know, a little bit, uh, what's the word for it? I guess, like, paper thin. But it's not, it's not paper thin, though. You know, like, there's some criticisms, obviously, in a theory, and there always will be, I feel like, and I do like how he actually acknowledged that acknowledges them, you know, in kind of the way he does, because, yeah, honestly, it makes me feel like he's self-aware of the flaws, but, like, he kind of has an idea for what the flaw, like, how he could, like, fill those gaps, and I do kind of like that, even though it is a stretch, but, like, that's usually what happens with theories, because they're just theories, and, yeah, honestly, I think this theory is interesting. I actually do like the idea you know, I think the gold thing actually could be summed up by the fact that they're just pirates and all they wanted was gold. And, you know, maybe, yeah, all they just wanted, all they wanted was just gold and stuff. Like, maybe that's it. Or maybe they thought that gold was, like, the most rare material that they had. So they thought, you know, let's store just gold in, like, the places that are harder to get into rather than just like some, oh, here's some iron, here's some bones, here's some rotten flesh, like, you know, in the pyramid. So I feel like maybe that's why there's only just gold is because they really like thought it was really rare. I'm just going off of a limb like, oh, they were, they were pirates. So like, of course they thought gold was like m m the most rare, you know? But yeah, honestly, that's, that's just my theory or that's how I would fill in the gap, per in that gap personally. And yeah, honestly, I think the mass extinction thing is actually a, a decent theory. I think it's a, a good idea for a theory, and I think, yeah, he could expand on it. He could make a theory on it. I think he might have. I don't know, because this is a lot older video, but if, if he hasn't yet, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Honestly, that'd be very interesting, and I think, yeah, it'd be cool. Honestly, I think this was a well put together theory with some, you know, whole, some gaps, but like, I feel like I kind of can fill them in on my own, but, and it's mainly like, on it's based on opinion, I feel like, you know, it's, it's all subjective. And I think the way th his videos are put together, his theory videos are put together, are really well made and really well done. Honestly, I, I feel like with his videos, I'm starting to realize why I think, for me, MatPat's theories aren't really as, you know, delivered greatly as this, because, you know, retro gaming now is, like, fully invested, you know, he, he stay, he's on point, like, he doesn't, like, trail off for some bit or jokes, and I get, like, MatPat's trying to add comedy, you know, just to make the videos more entertaining, but honestly, like, it just makes the, the it, to me, it just makes it feel like he's not, feels like he's not taking it seriously. Now, obviously, that's my opinion, so if you disagree, that's totally fine. But yeah, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoy, like, and subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye!